What is up guys? Today in this video I'm going to be showing you what we are going to learn how to do in this course and we're also going to be learning a little bit more than just what I'm going to show you but this is just the basis. So basically I have a basic HTML document. It doesn't have any styling whatsoever just some info on why you should learn Bootstrap and some links and we are going to apply Bootstrap 4 to this document, this HTML document to turn it into this. So you see here we have social media links at the top which you should follow me on instead of just these nasty little links right here. We have a nice little slideshow instead of just a basic ordered list. We have two cards which are really nice for links so I can click start and it'll take me to the course or docs and it'll take me to the bootstrap docs which looks nicer than just this right here and this right here. And at the very bottom, we have a little form that you can put in your email, but it doesn't actually do anything. I just did that for looks so that you could learn how to use bootstrap forms. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy this and make sure to check out the live URL of this so you can interact with it for yourself and also check out my social media and the links right here. And without further ado, let's get started. What is up, guys? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what exactly bootstrap is. And so for this example, I am talking about specifically Bootstrap 4, which is the latest version at the time of recording this. And as they put on their website, Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework in the world for building responsive, mobile-first projects on the web, which I think really sums it up perfectly. So just an example, you write code with Bootstrap, and it will work great on your computer, but then when you switch over to your phone, it just automatically formats it for you, and you don't have to do anything, which is really nice. Now to sort of understand how Bootstrap works, basically the most easiest thing that you can do is just take this code right here, and then copy it, and now copy the Bootstrap JavaScript and the Bootstrap CSS into your file, so that I'll be using that, or you can just download it directly so that you'll be able to customize the Bootstrap CSS. So Bootstrap basically turns programmers into designers. It helps programmers be able to design websites very quickly and it's also useful if you're just a programmer wanting to pu publish a little side project but you don't necessarily want to hire a designer or to go into CSS for hours and hours and waste your life. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums up Bootstrap for you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Alright guys, so in today's video we are going to be learning about why you should learn Bootstrap, and the different reasons of why you should learn Bootstrap. So, the first for me is the fact that it's very, very easy. You can get up and started with Bootstrap, and there's a lot of different features that are very easy to do, and it's certainly easier than if you were to code your own CSS and try to navigate through that. The second reason is that it's quick and rather than just having to code your own CSS which might take a long time you can just import the bootstrap learn it and it's a lot easier than learning a lot of more complex CSS topics and you also get to have beautiful looking websites really quickly. You just saw the website in the last lecture most likely and you saw how good it looked just by using basic bootstrap concepts. And finally, it's customizable. So if you don't like one thing or another, you can just change it. It's not like it's just set in stone what bootstrap is supposed to look like. There are different themes. It's extremely customizable and you can customize the CSS on your own. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right guys, so before we start working with bootstrap, we need to make sure that we have the base code with all the text copied and pasted into your empty document file before we start adding bootstrap. So I will have a link to the code and you can just copy and paste it and then put it into here. Or if you want to find it directly on GitHub, all you're going to have to do is open up a new ha tab, go to GitHub, and then you want to look up K-H-A-N-R-A-D-C-O-D-R, D-E-R. As Conrad Coder. Then we're going to go to Users. You'll click on my profile. It's the little elephant. I'll go over to Repositories and you'll see Learn Bootstrap. So this is the official code. And then what you want to do is you want to grab the before Bootstrap code 
and you see it's just very simple bootstrap so you're going to want to copy that put it into your text file and then we'll also want to add some HTML tags to that and let's also do some body tags alright so now let's make sure everything worked properly so I'll open up a new tab and I'll do control O I'll get our file and you see it looks exactly like this file right here so yeah that's pretty much it guys and in the next video we will start working with implementing bootstrap into our file now sweet alright guys so in this video we are going to import bootstrap 4 into our application and we're going to do it using the bootstrap CDN and what the bootstrap CDN basically is is it's a little bit of code that links your file to bootstrap CSS and JavaScript now there's another way that you could import bootstrap 4 into our application and that's by just directly copying and pasting the bootstrap CSS and then just linking it up to our file like you would if you wrote your own CSS but in this example we are going to be just importing the CDN because I think it's a little bit easier and it basically does the same thing unless you want to customize the bootstrap code a lot and you're really good with CSS anyways so in order to import the bootstrap for CDN the first thing that we have to do is open up Chrome and I'm just gonna look up bootstrap 4 into Google and we'll click right here and you'll be taken to this URL right here I'll put a link to it and you'll basically just scroll down you can download bootstrap but that's not what we're going to be doing instead we're just going to get the bootstrap CDN so we have this little box right here I'll copy it and then inside here we're gonna open up two head tags and then inside the head tags we're just gonna paste in the bootstrap and just like that we have imported bootstrap into our file so to see what it looks like now I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm just gonna open up our file so it still doesn't look that great but there's definitely a lot more styling go going on and compared to the file without any styling which I'm gonna open up in just a second you can see that it already looks a lot nicer than the one without any bootstrap 4 looks so now we're actually going to start adding some bootstrap elements into this and I will see you in the next video alright guys so in this video we're going to take this learn bootstrap today text and we are going to put it in a bootstrap nav bar so in order to do that first we're just going to open up our text editor and I'm going to put the learn bootstrap h1 text and I'm going to put it in between two nav tags so I'll say nav and cut that put that in here just like that alright so I'll save it and we'll reload the page and you'll notice nothing happens and that's because without bootstrap the navbar does nothing and without the navbar being assigned to the h1 the h1 does not change its appearance to fit the navbar so there's a very easy way to fix this and that is with adding bootstrap classes so this is where bootstraps gonna come in so we'll have a class and I'll say navbar navbar dark and we'll save that and now you see if I reload the page it gives a little indentation right here because it's saying that it is in a navbar now the last thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take this learn bootstrap text and make this the navbar brand which is what you're gonna use for your image or your text that it has the name of your site in the navbar so h1 we're gonna add the bootstrap class of navbar brand and we save that and something interesting is gonna happen so you see the text disappeared and a little bit less of a space is now taken up and that's because the text got smaller and it turned to white because we assigned the navbar to be navbar dark however we didn't assign a color so it created this white on white thing 
And there's a very simple way to fix this. All we have to do is take the background color of the navbar and change it. So I've already picked out a navbar color. However, I recommend that you pick out your own just to give it your own feel. You can just get a color picker or whatever. So what I'm going to do is just open up our text editor. And in the first nav tag, I'm going to say style. And then inside here, we'll have background color is going to be this color that I picked out. All right, so I got that in there. And I'll add a semicolon, save. And now you see the white text shows up on the bluish background. And we have learned bootstrap today in small text inside the nav bar, perfectly centered in everything. And next, I don't like how close this why you should learn bootstrap is to the nav bar. So I'm just going to add a break between the two. So I'll go down here and I'll say BR and we'll save it, reload. And just like that, we have completed our nav bar. Except for in the next video, I'm going to take these social media links at the bottom that link to my social media and I want to put them up on the nav bar but to the right of the nav bar nice and centered with little icons so that people can click on those from the nav bar and I'll see you then sweet alright so as of now our nav bar looks pretty bland it basically just says learn bootstrap today and so in order to change that I'm gonna do two things one I'm gonna put these links up here and I'm gonna put them to the right side of the nav bar and two I'm going to turn these text links into image links so you click on the Twitter logo brings you to Twitter click on the YouTube logo brings you to YouTube etc so in order to do that we'll just open up our text editor and we'll cut this also you can get rid of this find me text we don't need it anymore it's useless to us and then I'm just gonna take the links and I'm gonna paste them right under the nav bar brand so we'll save that and you see now if we reload the page you have Twitter, YouTube, and GitHub shown there respectively. The only problem is that they look really weird because it's blue text on a blue background. So that's partially why we're changing it to images but also why it looks weird is because it's right next to the Learn Bootstrap Today text and you don't want too much text crowded in the same area especially when we have so much space on this navbar. So we're going to take these links and then move them all the way over to the right side of our page. And in order to do that, we're going to open up our text editor and put these links inside a bootstrap div class. So we'll name this bootstrap div class float xs for extra small. That's bootstrap for extra small. Right, because we want it to float to the right. And then we'll take these links and I'll paste them into here and now you see if we reload the page they're now on this side of the navbar instead of this side on the navbar all crowded so the last thing to do is just to change these into little icons into little images and so in order to do that I'm just gonna do this and I'll say IMG SRC equals and we'll give it a height of 50 and a width of 50 and so I'll basically put in the source for the Twitter lo logo and I'll do this with the YouTube and the GitHub so I'm gonna pause the video do that for all three of these links and I'll see you then okay so now I have all my images in you see we have a source for the Twitter YouTube logo and GitHub logo, all with width 50 and height 50 to keep them nice and square. So we'll save this and we'll see what our final nav bar looks like. So reload the page and you see the nav bar got a little bit thicker but not too much. And you have the Twitter, YouTube, and GitHub logo shown there respectively. Now you can click on any of these images and it will bring you to my Twitter, YouTube, or GitHub. So let's just try that for YouTube. So I can open this in a new tab. And yeah, guys, really check out my channel. I recommend that you subscribe and do the same over here. So check out my Twitter. All that stuff you can do just from the navbar. 
So yeah, guys, our nav bar is done. In the next video, we are going to take this and turn it into a slideshow. So I'll see you then. All right, so this next section is where things are going to start to get tricky. And basically what we want to do is we want to take these three reasons and then turn them into an interactive slideshow, or as they call them in Bootstrap 4, a carousel so that users can navigate through the carousel and see the three reasons displayed to them. So luckily Bootstrap makes this a lot easier than it would be if we just raw coded it on our own, but it's still pretty difficult, especially compared to what we've been doing in the past, so just bear with me. So first I'm going to open up our text editor, and we're just going to comment out this ordered list. We don't really need it, however we will need the three reasons for it. Now I'm going to give myself some space, and the first thing that I'm going to do is create our carousel. And we do that through a div. Bootstrap loves to use divs. And so the div class for our carousel will be carousel space slide. And we also have an ID for our carousel. And the ID for the carousel is simply just what you want to call the carousel. So I'm going to call our carousel reasons because it's stating the three reasons. All right, next up what we want to do is we want to create a data ride and that data ride will be carousel and that's it so now let's start working on the next part so first we're going to create an ordered list and in this ordered list we are going to show the three slides so we'll do li and this list item will be data target and you can guess the target will be hashtag or pound symbol reasons referring to the div ID right here and then next we'll do data slide and the data slide will be zero because it will be the first slide and we'll give it a class of active which means that when we load the page that's going to be the first slide that we're going to see. So since we have three reasons, I'm going to make sure that we have three list items and make sure that not all of them are in the class of active, just the one that you want to be active, which for me is the first one. And instead of zero, we'll have one for the for second one. And instead of one, we'll have two for the third one because computers count starting with zero unlike us where we start at one so I'll save that and now we are going to work on the inner part of the carousel so coming out of the ordered list we'll do a div and the class is going to be oopsies so we'll do a div and the class is going to be carousel inner. It will be the innards of the carousel. And we'll also give it a role. And the role will just be a list box, which is a variable set by Bootstrap. And then inside of here, we're going to create some more divs. Like I said before, Bootstrap loves divs. So we'll have carousel item. And that item will be active referring to this right here. That'll be the active class, the thing that when you load the page, that's the first thing that pops up. And inside of here, I'm going to put in another div. And eventually, we will also put in an image to correspond with the div. But for now, we're just going to put a carousel caption. And the caption will be the first reason, which is it's easy okay and now we want to take this and we want to do this with the other two reasons so I'll copy and I'll paste and paste one more time now the only thing that we're going to change is that I'll just be carousel item not carousel item caption and also we want to change the reason so the second reason is you can create beautiful websites
And the third reason is only the cool kids do it. All right, so next, now that we have the three slides, what we want to do is we want to create the little tags so that we can move between the slides. So in order to move between the slides, we are going to create an A class and make sure to keep this outside the div class carousel inner because we're not talking about the inner section anymore. So in this A class, we are going to say class is going to be equal to left carousel control. All right. And the href will be reasons because that's the name of our carousel. The role will be a button. And finally, the data slide will be prev for previous. Then inside of here, inside of our A, we are going to create inside our link span. And the span will have a class equal to icon prev for icon previous. And we'll say aria hidden will be equal to true. That'll just make things easier for us. And we'll create another span class. So span class, which will be equal to sr only. And we'll say next. So basically what this is doing is this is creating the left carousel control that lets us go to the previous slide. Excuse me, instead of next, we should have previous. And then we're basically just going to take this A class, and we're going to copy it and paste it again, this time for the right carousel control. So the data slide will be next the icon previous will be the icon next so we want to use the next icon not the previous icon even though they're both the same thing and instead of previous we will show next okay guys so just like that we have created our carousel so let's go see what it looks like all right so it looks pretty bad you see we can't even slide through it and we just have like two reasons on one page. And I'm going to talk about why that is in a second. So you notice our carousel is not sliding. It's not changing to different reasons. And that is because we don't have something else imported. So we already have Bootstrap imported, but we don't have Ajax imported, which is the JavaScript behind this whole carousel. So in order to get Ajax imported, I'm going to open up Atom go to the head tag right before we import bootstrap and I'm just gonna paste in the Ajax CDN now you can just copy and paste this from uh, the github or you can just look up jQuery CDN because that's actually what it is get this link and then just put it at the top of your file so now you see if we save this and reload you're gonna notice that we can now file through the different reasons now obviously it doesn't look great and we're going to talk about why in the next video but it still works you can slide through the different reasons now let's say that you still can't or let's say two reasons are shown up on the same page that is probably because you have two active classes so what do I mean by that I mean right here div class active that means that when I reload the page it's easy it's going to be the first reason that shows up However, if I give active to another class, so it's going to say it's easy and you can create beautiful websites when I reload. And it sort of is like a double negative thing and it just looks really ugly and it doesn't work as well. So in order to change that, make sure that you only have one active class in your carousel 
that goes for up here too. And we'll make this carousel look a little bit nicer in the next video. Alright guys, so this is the video where we finally finish up the carousel. And we're going to do three things. First, we're going to make this text bigger. Second, we are going to make sure that the width of the image fits with the width of the carousel. And third, we're going to get rid of this ordered list one, two, three thing and make it like little dots at the bottom so we can see where we are in our navigation through the carousel. So let's get started. So first thing is I'm going to go up to the div ID reasons where we create our carousel and I'm going to have a style and that style will be width 900 pixels and I'm just choosing 900 pixels because that's how wide the images are. You should choose differently if your images are of a different width or something. And I'm also going to do margin which is going to be 0 auto and now I'm going to save this and reload the page and you see now it's in the center and all I have to do is get rid of the ordered list and make this text bigger. So let's get started. First thing is I'm going to give this ordered list a class and the class is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to carousel indicators hopefully I spelled that right and we'll reload and you see now we have three little dots at the bottom so that's pretty cool next we'll just make the text bigger so inside this carousel caption make sure that you spell it right I didn't spell it right when I was recording the tutorial so I'm sorry if that messed any of you up and we'll just put all of this text in h3 you can do h2 if you want but I think h3 looks better so heading 3 slash heading 3 heading 3 slash heading 3 alright so we'll save it reload and just like that we have completed our carousel sweet so next we are going to turn these into bootstrap cards I'll see you then so before we start making our own cards I think it's important that we actually learn what a card is and the capabilities of cards because when I first heard about cards I wasn't really sure what they were or what they did but once I started using them, I realized how truly useful they are. So basically, a card is just a piece of content that can be modified with an image, with links and buttons and all that stuff, and it just stores content in that one little area. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I think this example right here states it perfectly. So you see here we have a card title, some quick text, and a little link there, as well as an image that you can customize. So this is basically the layout that we're going to be doing for our course. We'll have an image, we'll have the card title, we'll have a little bit about the link, and then we'll actually have the link. But cards, it's not just this simple format. You can also add lists, you can add several links, and it's just really cool, and I really love the idea of cards. And, I mean, I want to give a pat on the back to Bootstrap for this one. So hopefully you've learned a bit about cards. Remember that this is going to be in the resources of this lecture, so you can just click on it and then learn a little bit more about cards, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so hopefully you've learned some useful things about cards, but now it's actually time to implement them into our website. So I was thinking about implementing the cards right here in these two links, and let's get started. So first I'm just going to scroll down, and you can delete this commented part right here. We don't need it anymore. And let's just create our card. So as we always do in Bootstrap, first we're going to create a div. And that div is going to have a class of card. Next, inside the div, we are going to have the image. So we're going to need an image. We're going to need a title, description, and then finally a link. So first we start off with the image. And the class is going to be equal to card img top and then the source 
I'm just going to paste in right here. You can choose your own source if you want. And the height is going to be equal to 180. And the width is going to be equal to 318. Now, obviously, you can change this depending on how big you want your card to be and all of that stuff. All right, so still inside our card div, we're going to create another div. And the div will have a class of card block. And this is where the main content's going to go in. So now in the card block, we're going to have an H4. And the H4 will have a class equal to the card title. So I'll put in card title. And this will be the title of our card. So the title of our card will say, take the course, as it says right here. OK, next, going outside, we are going to say a paragraph. And that paragraph will have a class equal to the card text. Nice. And for the card text, we'll just say something like learn today by taking the course. Just something very basic like that. Add an exclamation point. And then finally, we have the actual link. So we're going to take this link right here that we already have that goes to my Udemy. And we're going to put it right here. All right, make sure that we close out of the A right here. And we will say start. OK, so now we have a link that says start. But we want to turn it into a button. And in order to turn it into a bootstrap button, it's very, very simple. We'll just add a class. And the class will be btn for button, btn dash primary, which is the default button. And in the future, we'll talk about different types of buttons. But just for this example, we're going to be using the primary button. OK, so we save that. And that's our first card. Now let's make our second card. So we'll just copy it, paste. And instead of going to the Udemy, it goes to the Bootstrap Components for the second link. And instead of take the course, we'll say get or learn more about Bootstrap more. So we can say go to the site to get started today. And then instead of start, we'll just say visit. And just like that, we've created the second card, except for we have to change the image. So I'll delete this image, and I'll replace it with this image. So obviously, you can choose your own image and your own size, or you can just copy off of my image. It doesn't really matter. Now, finally, I'm just going to delete the two links right here, because we don't need them anymore. And we'll save. And let's see what happens. So reload the page. And oh my goodness, these cards are really big. Why are they so big? And it's because we haven't created bootstrap columns yet. So in the next video, we're going to talk about bootstrap columns, one of the most popular features of bootstrap. And we're going to implement them to fix our cards. See you then. So in the last video, we were working with Bootstrap cards. And once we finally reloaded the page to see what we had done, we noticed something. And that was that the Bootstrap cards take up an entire row each. So why is this? And simply put, this is because we did not define the Bootstrap cards into their certain columns. Now what do I mean by that? What I'm talking about is the Bootstrap grid system. 
So what the grid system does is it divides your screen into 12 columns and then you can assign different content into each of those columns. So for example, I could say, okay, I want everything in this column right here and I want some stuff in this column right here and Bootstrap will do it for me. Now Bootstrap does this because this makes it a lot easier for them to format your website on mobile because they can divide the screen equally and then they can say okay this content goes here then this content goes here. So it's 12 columns in total and then you just change the varying sizes. So what we need to do in the next video is we need to put both of these cards into their own columns so that they can both be on the same row. So we'll do something like one column here, one column here, and a column right here to space it out, or something like that. So this is basically how bootstrap columns work, and it's very, very helpful if you're running a site and you want it to work on mobile and desktop, and it's one of the more prominent features in bootstrap and one of the many reasons why I love bootstrap so much. So let's get started with columns in the next video. So hopefully you've learned some good things about bootstrap columns and the grid system, but now we're going to apply the grid system to our website to make it look a lot more professional. And one tip for creating a professional website is to make sure that there is a lot of empty space. Now what do I mean by that? What I mean is that everything's not clunky and clunched together all the way to the left side, which is what HTML defaultly wants to do. So what we need to do is we need to take this why should I learn bootstrap and we need to indent it we need to take these columns and make sure that they're indented to the center and we also need to take this form so that it's not all the way to the side but there's a little bit of white space for the user to kind of relax or if you want to monetize the site you could put ads there too so in order to do that we have 12 columns in bootstrap we're going to put one to the left one to the right and then 10 in the center the remaining 10 will hold all of this stuff the why should I learn bootstrap the carousel the cards and the form. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to open up our text editor and we're going to go right to the top right after we create the nav bar because one tip is that you don't want to have the nav bar indented with everything else. The nav bar you want to take up the entire screen as our nav bar does. So right after the nav bar we're going to create a div. And the div will have a column class. So in order to do that you say C O L for column dash md for medium and we'll talk a little bit why we say medium later dash one okay so we've just created our first column now we're going to copy this and we're going to put this at the end of the file so that we'll have one column on the left and another on the right so I'll scroll all the way down right after we have our form paste that in and we have two columns on the side. Now the last thing that we need to do is to put everything else, all of this, into a div. And that div column will be the remaining 10 columns because we have one on the side, another on the other side. That leaves us with 10 spaces left. So I'll create another div and the class will be call XL because this is more important so we give it extra large dash 10 for the remaining 10 columns and then I'll cut this div and I'll make sure to put it at the end we'll scroll all the way down and then right before we have our last empty column we will close it out like that so we'll save it reload our page and you see now everything is in one big column and the cards already look a little bit nicer and so does everything else. So in the next video we are going to size these cards up so that they actually fit exactly with the picture and we'll be done with our cards. So I'll see you then. So we have already put everything in this big large center column right here but now it's time to divide up that center column even more so that we can have two cards on the same row and equally spaced from each other. So how are we going to do that? Well, simply all we have to do is put the cards into smaller columns and then space them apart. So let's get started. First thing, we're going to open up Adam. And we're going to scroll up to the first card. 
And right here where it says div class, we're just going to add another class to that. And this is something that I think is really cool is that you can add multiple classes within the same class card. I don't have to create another div. I just have to add on to the div class card. And so we're going to add in a call extra large for. And before I add this column class to the other card, I just want to talk a little bit about why we used XL for extra large instead of MD for medium or SM for small or anything like that. And this is because Bootstrap is built mobile first. It's to help you make your websites look just as good on a big computer as it would to the tiniest smartphone. So in order to do that, what they do is they create the columns. And by choosing whether a column is extra large or extra small, you determine the priority of that column being there. So then Bootstrap will be able to break down your site and make it as easy and look as good as possible. So when we're doing extra large, we're saying that this card right here is essentially very, very important. But when we're doing something like medium, we're saying that the sidebars aren't going to be as important if Bootstrap's trying to display the device on a very, very small device. So now let's just take this column extra large four. And I'll also paste it with the other card. So let's see how that looks. And you see it looks a little bit better, but there's a little bit of overlap. And that's because this email form right here is just sneaking up on us. And that's pretty annoying. So for now, I'm just going to copy this email form and just per, uh, temporarily comment it out of our application so that it won't bother us. So I'll do that. And now if I reload, you see it looks a little bit better. Now what we have to do is we have to take these two cards right here and we have to split them apart. And how are we going to do that? Well, since we have 10 total spaces in the middle and we used four on each, that leaves us with two middle spaces. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a middle column that is worth two bootstrap spaces. So div class column extra small because I don't think it's that important or actually let's just do regular small and we'll say two okay and then let me just format that for a second we'll save it and now if we reload it looks better but it's still not quite right so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another column on the left and the right and that way it will sort of even out everything and it will look nice with the carousel as well. So we'll put a column right here and we'll give it call MD1 and I'll format that. Okay, so we'll copy that and then we'll put that at the end of the cards. So what this will do is this will essentially give our website a little bit of padding so that it'll be able to even it out no matter what size device it's on. So now if I reload, you see these two columns, they're perfectly centered and everything looks great. The last thing that I think we need to do is add a couple of line breaks between the carousel and the cards just to sort of space everything out. So I'll go up to the top and then right before we declare our uh, first column on the side I am just going to add a couple of line breaks so br br and let's see how that looks okay that looks great and just like that we're done with our cards and we've learned a lot about columns so in the next video I'm gonna talk to you about how to start styling our form sweet all right guys so so far we have bootstrapped literally everything on this website except for the email form and in the last video we commented the email form out but now it's actually time to take that email form and uncomment it and then actually apply bootstrap to it so we can be done with this site transformation okay so first thing we're going to do is open up our text editor and uncomment the email form so I'll save that open up the page reload and uh oh it seems that 
this text right here, the following form does absolutely nothing, has crept up on our empty column. So how do we solve this? Well, just for the sake of time, I'm going to add in 15 line breaks to our form. So br, br, br. I'm going to pause the video and add in the other ones. And now, just like that, we have 15 line breaks. Now, you can add more, you can add less. It doesn't really matter. This is just what I think looks the best. And, of course, if you want, there are always other ways to solve problems. This is just the fastest way to do so. So I'll save that, reload, and this right here, this text, is going to be broken all the way down so that it can be right next to the sign-up form. So we reload that. The following form does absolutely nothing, and we have the email and the sign up. Sweet. Now all we need to do is add Bootstrap. So I'm going to open up our text editor again and we are going to get rid of this form element right here. We can also get rid of the email and instead inside here the input type text and the button sign up is going to be part of a div as everything seems to be in Bootstrap. And that div is going to be form group. So we have our div created. Now I'm just going to cut this, paste it into here, and you see inside our form group we have the input type text and the sign up. So let's see what our form looks like all bootstrapped up. And oh no! Bootstrap has not been applied to this at all. And why is that? Well, we have to put everything inside a form group but then we actually have to assign bootstrap classes to the forms. And this is very easy to fix. All we have to do is just open up our text editor. And right here in the input type text, our text box, we are going to create a class. And that class will be form form dash control. And this will literally add bootstrap to pretty much any form element you can imagine. So whether that's a text box, whether that's one of those select box thingies, it doesn't matter. Form control adds Bootstrap to it. So I'll save the page. And now you see we now have a Bootstrapped up text box. So if I click on it, it highlights in blue and it looks very nice and very familiar to what you might see on some other websites. So next what I want to do is I want to take the sign up button and put it on the same side as the form and make the form, the text box, just a little bit smaller. So in order to do that, I'm going to put this form box, this text box, inside of column so then the sign up box can just sneak up in there and be nested right next to the text box. Okay, so in order to do that, right inside our form group we are going to have a div and that class will be column large 10 and then we're just going to take the text and put it in there make sure that the button is not included inside this column so I'll save that reload and you see now the form and the button are now on the same row. Last thing that we need to do is turn this sign up button into a nice bootstrap button. And we've already done this before with the bootstrap cards as you see, the start and the visit button, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to open up our text editor, and right here where it says button, we'll give it the class, and that class will be btn for button, btn dash primary. So I'll save that. And now our sign up button looks great with the bootstrap and our form looks great too. Last thing is that I want to put the following form does absolutely nothing and just put it inside the text box here so that it's more visible to the user. Okay, so I have our input text type right here and after we have a class of form control we give an element of placeholder and right here you just put in the text that you want to be place held. So for that I'm just going to take this text right here, cut it, 
paste it into here and say this form does absolutely nothing. All right, so now we save that and we'll also get rid of this paragraph right here. And you see if we reload the page, it says this form does absolutely nothing and we have the sign up. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to space everything out because the key with web design is spacing things out. You don't want the user to feel like it's overbearing, the website seem overbearing in any way for the user. So in order to do that, I'm just going to add two more line breaks right here. So that would be 17 line breaks. And then, and right after the form group, I'll put in two line breaks right here and we will put in a horizontal line a horizontal row which will just be a little line that will tell the user that our site has ended that there's nothing else to see so we reload and you see we have the line down here and just like that our website is done so i will see you in the next one congratulations Okay, so now that you have successfully created a website using Bootstrap, it's time to dive into some different Bootstrap concepts that we didn't go over when we were actually building the site. And the first one is that I would like to go more deeply into buttons. And you may be saying, but we've already created buttons. And that's true, but Bootstrap gives us a whole list of different buttons that we can use for different purposes. So in our course, when we were creating the cards and we had the form, we had the BTN primary button. So I've just created an HTML document with the bootstrap for CDN and just a basic primary button. You can get this off the GitHub or you can just create this on your own. And let's see what it looks like. And it's just as you'd expect. We just have the primary link. Now, let's say we want the button to serve a different purpose. We just don't want a boring blue button. And luckily, bootstrap gives us all of these options right here. So maybe we want the button to be a little bit more sleek, a little bit more subtle. That's where we would create a secondary button. So I go in here, and instead of BTN primary, it will be BTN secondary. And we'll also put that in the button right here. So I'll save that, reload, and you see now we have this nice white button right here. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually delete this right here. And let's create another button. So another thing that we could do is a success button. If you want to have the user click on a link that brings them to something successful that looks like a safe link, you can just push the success button. So maybe that's a publish button, maybe that's a save button, something like that. So we'll go into the class here and do BTN success. And this is actually one of my more favorite buttons. Success. So you save that, reload, and you see we have a nice green button up at the top. Now, let's say if you want a different kind of button, maybe more a light bluish button, like something that you would click on if you wanted to get info, well, that's where the bootstrap info button comes in. So we change this to info. And we change this right here to info. And if we save that, you will see that now Bootstrap gives us this helpful little light bluish info button. Okay, next, let's say if we're getting into something maybe a little bit more tricky, like if you want to delete something, then we have the Bootstrap warning button. So we'll have warning, warning, and we'll save that. And you see now it's got it's got some orange in there and it's just telling the user, hey, you know, this is kind of a serious action that's going to happen if you click this button. Now, let's say if it's something really serious, like if you want to tell the user, this is the button that you use to delete your account, you probably don't want to do that. This is danger. Do not click this button unless you really want to. So that's where the danger button comes in. Danger and danger. So you see when we switch it to danger, it's red. Let's actually add an exclamation point to that. And you see it's a danger button. So this would be the type of button that you would click if you wanted to, say, delete your account. 
Now the last button is just if you want to be lazy, and that's if you just want to create a link, but it's also a button. So that's where the class of link comes in. Link. So I'll save that. And you see now it looks just like a regular bootstrap link. So hopefully you guys have remembered what all of these are. If you haven't, you can just get them right off the website. It's primary, secondary, success, info, warning, danger, and link. So hopefully you've got those all down, and I will see you in the next one. So in the last video, we talked about the different types of bootstrap buttons, but now it's time to talk about tags. And what exactly are tags? Well, you've probably seen them before, and they look something like this. So you see right here you have an example heading and then you have like a little new next to it or whatever. It just makes a post look a lot more legit. So in order to get bootstrap tags, all we have to do is simply create a heading. So I'm going to do heading 3. Then inside that heading we'll have text. So I'll say example text. And then we need to add a tag. And in order to add a tag, Inside the H3 tags, we are going to get a span, and the span will have a class equal to that of tag, tag, dash, default, and we'll give this just say new or something like that to make it look kind of legit. So we'll save that, and you see now we have example text, new, and that nice little tag. Now just like bootstrap buttons, we can also have tags in different styles. For instance, if I copy this, we can have a primary tag. So just like we have a primary button, we can have a primary tag. We cannot have a secondary tag because that looks stupid, but we can have a success tag. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. So hopefully you've learned how to create tags. It's just you create a span class, and that span class is tag, tag, dash, primary, default, success, whichever you want it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you need help, make sure to check out the GitHub, and I will see you in the next one. All right, so, so far we have talked about tags. We've talked about buttons. Now it's time to talk about a Jumbotron. And what is a Jumbotron? Well, just like at a sports stadium, a Jumbotron is just a big thing on your website that is going to display information. So Bootstrap Jumbotrons, they can have text, they can have buttons, they can have all sorts of stuff, just like with a card, except for they're a lot larger. So in order to create our Jumbotron, we first must learn that Jumbotrons will take up the biggest space possible. And because of that, we have to contain them within a column. So first, let's create some columns. So I'm going to go up here at a break, and we'll create our first column, which we'll say is a column large one. And then we will create that right there and put another. And then in the middle, where we're actually going to have our big jumbotron column, We'll give that a value of 10, column large 10. And then inside of here is where we are going to put our Jumbotron. And in order to create a Jumbotron, all you have to do is create a div, call it Jumbotron. And immediately anything inside here will be rendered with the Jumbotron. So for instance, I'll create an H1, and we'll say this is a jumbotron and then below it I'll just do a line break and then I'll do HR just for a little horizontal line and then right after that we'll create a paragraph and the paragraph will say it's pretty cool P and then finally let's just add a button so I'll just take one of these buttons right here say the info button right here 
and we'll change the text from info to click me. So let's see how our Jumbotron turned out. So I'll open up, reload the page, and you see right here in the middle, it says this is a Jumbotron. It's all contained with two large columns on the side and a large 10 width column in the middle. So originally, I was going to have a Jumbotron be the main part of our course instead of the carousel for our website, but then I decided that the Jumbotron was a little bit too easy and the carousel was very interesting. So you can use this Jumbotron for the main chunk of your site too. And thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so when it comes to Bootstrap, everything just pretty much comes in the same package with a lot of gray colors, a lot of black, and it's just the same all around. But what if you want to use different fonts, different color schemes, stuff like that? Well, that's where Bootstrap themes come in. So luckily, a lot of people have worked on several different Bootstrap themes that we can just simply import into our website and make it look totally different while still being able to style everything using Bootstrap. So in order to do that, there are several different websites that you can go to. However, my favorite website for getting Bootstrap themes is called Bootswatch. And I'll make sure we see Bootstrap themes because some Bootstrap themes are made but Bootswatch gives you free themes and all you have to do is take whichever looks cool actually looks cool right here and right next to download there's a little button you can get the bootstrap.min.css copy it and then right after we import our regular bootstrap we want to import our bootstrap theme because it always goes in list of priority so if we put our bootstrap theme before we put our regular bootstrap then our regular bootstrap is going to show through so I'll create a link and the href will be the link that I got from right here the bootstrap.min.css and I'll get rid of all this junk right here okay so you'll see once we apply this theme to our website it's going to look totally different. So it looks like the text got a little bit bigger. The primary button has a little bit of a darker blue. And so does everything else on the website. And it looks pretty cool. Now let's try maybe another font. So let's say sandstone. I'll get the bootstrap.min.css. Copy the URL for it. And paste it into here instead of the flatly theme. And already, our website, once again, has a completely different personality. So you can do this with, there are tons, dozens and dozens of themes to choose from. On here, there are only a few, but there are definitely a lot more out there. So hopefully, you'll be able to customize your site, make it your own, make it have a nice personality, and I'll see you in the next one.